A group of scientists placed five monkeys in a cage, and in the middle, a ladder with a banana on top. Every time a monkey went up the ladder, the scientists soaked the rest of the monkeys with cold water. After a while, every time a monkey would start up the ladder, the others would pull it down and beat it up. After a time, no monkey would dare try climbing the ladder, no matter how great the temptation. The scientists then decided to replace one of the monkeys, and the first thing this monkey did was start to climb the ladder. Immediately, the others pulled him down and beat him up. After several beatings, the new monkey learned never to go up the ladder, even though there was no evident reason not to, aside from the beatings. The second monkey was substituted and the same occurred. The first monkey participated in the beating of the second monkey. A third monkey was changed and the same was repeated. The fourth monkey was changed, resulting in the same, and finally the fifth was replaced as well. What was left was a group of monkeys that, without ever having received a cold shower, continued to beat up any monkey who attempted to climb the ladder. If it were possible to ask the monkeys why they beat up on all those who attempted to climb the ladder, their most likely answer would be, I don't know, it's just how things are done around here. We humans aren't too unlike the monkeys. After enough time, we follow customs that if you take a step back, may not make any sense at all. Take money, for example. The total amount of money estimated in the world is around 60 trillion US dollars. Only 8.3% of that is actual cash. That means 91.7% of all the world's money is digital. It's not real. Imagination. Humans used to barter goods and services. The problem was, both parties had to have a need for the other's goods or services. If I had eggs and wanted your firewood, but you wanted apples, I'd have to find someone with apples who wanted eggs first before I can make a trade with you. So we made up money. Money became the medium between those transactions, which made deals quicker. A lot of cultures used things like shells or deer antlers, things that were rare or useful enough to be valued on their own. And later we used stones and metals. Money used to be represented by something that held value on its own, like gold or silver. But a lot of money today isn't backed by anything, except the agreement among ourselves that we will honor the money. So a blend of cotton and linen that doesn't have much use on its own is what people work 40 hours a week for, exchange actual useful goods for, and even kill over. Just because we all agree that it's worth something. A system that we can't always explain and it's just how it's always been. Money. It's the root of all evil. Money talks. Biggie said, more money, more problems. Cuba Gooding Jr. said, show me the money. The best things in life are free, yet nothing in life is free. Today we talk NBA free agency. We explain the salary cap and react to all the signings that happened last off season. Oh yeah, and we have a special guest. Millions of people watch the NBA every season, rooting for their favorite team and picking their favorite players. My name is Dylan Garvin, and I'm more interested in the game outside of the game. In this simple game that involves one ball, two hoops, and ten players, how do you crack the code and build the perfect team? This is Dynasty. Hey, welcome back to the Dynasty Podcast, episode four. Today we're talking about free agency, and we have Ryan with us again, and a special guest, the other brother, Colin Garvin. Hey guys, what's going on, fellas and ladies, I guess? Our dozens of listeners, as Richard Jefferson says. <laughs> I saw only one person listen to this podcast last week. <laughs> oh, I got 100 listens. Yeah, that was Colin, 99. <laughs> <laughs> I just, um, I opened up 100 tabs and then I just play it on repeat <laughs> and then let that go all night. <laughs> Nice. It's all about perception. No one's gonna listen to a podcast only has two listens. I tell everyone here in uh, Canada about it. Really? You're oh. very, you're very big in Canada. <laughs> all right. Reactions to free agency. You're drinking milk during this. <laughs> when I came, Ryan wasn't here, but when I came into the bedroom, <laughs> I had my headphones in my hand. And I set down the glass of milk, and my headphones dunked into it. <laughs> For all you listeners out there, <laughs> I can't see Colin drinking milk. It's pretty much exactly what you think it is. <laughs> Visual jokes. 
You're just going to stick with that. Uh, reactions? Well, I thought the Paul George trade to OKC was crazy until I saw um, what the Celtics were trying to trade with the Pacers, and the Pacers just weren't agreeing with anything. Yeah, what was that, up with that? Because uh, didn't they offer two first-round picks and one of Avery Bradley, Jay Crowder, or Marcus Smart? Yeah. Was that the deal? Yeah. Yeah, I think that they would take Bradley over all of them. But, and they were saying, the Patriots were saying it was not enough. But then they traded, Old or they Depot just traded. and Sabonis. Yeah, which is nothing, I think, compared to, I don't know. So that was just like. I think they were just weird. like, screw the Celtics. Yes, and then now Paul George came out and said that he's not. The rumors of him really wanting to go to the Lakers aren't as strong as they've been oh, yeah. perceived, and that he might. Which now that ruins all the Lakers' plans. Which I'm happy with that. So who cares about that? We're all happy about that. <laughs> Suck it, Lonzo. Screw the Lakers. <laughs> and I'm all about this, uh, the Sixers getting their pick this year. So. It's true. Uh, what else um, happened? I mean, Gordon Hayward. Going to Celtics. Like in Boston right now? That was yeah, big. that was predictable. Predictable? Yeah. You didn't think he'd stay with the Jets? Yeah, I didn't think. Uh, I could see him stay with the Jets, but I couldn't see him going to the Heat. Yeah. Um, so that was, it wasn't too crazy, but yeah, that was cool to see. Uh, Blake Griffin, I was interested to see if he would go somewhere else, but he stayed back with the Clippers. Other than that, it hasn't been. JJ Reddick going to the Sixers, I mean, that's amazing. Trust the process. <laughs> Hayward, because um, the Celtics head coach, he was his coach in college, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Well, he uh, he recruited he recruited Hayward when Gordon was before his growth spurt in high school. So I think he was about a sophomore, and he saw him and liked him, and like had talked to him and and. There was a verbal commitment to Butler when uh, Brad Stevens was there, and then Gordon Hayward got his growth spurt, grew whatever how tall he is now, like six nine or, or six whatever, not shorter than that, like six seven, uh, and got a lot of looks. Yeah, and got a lot of looks, and then he said, "I'm gonna stick with Brad Stevens because he's the guy that first took a look at me." So now it's like the same thing. Now he's going back, and they have unfinished business because they never won anything. But. <laughs> Attracted yeah. Gordon to Boston, and I just think the NBA got better because the the finals was so boring. So I like seeing that the Rockets are more competitive. Uh, the Nuggets got more competitive, which doesn't mean anything. Um, Spurs didn't really do anything, but they're always competitive. Warriors resigned everyone. Celtics got more competitive. I mean, I would say now there's four viable teams that could win the or uh, yeah, I'd say four. Four or five. I'd say four to five. Yeah. And you have Cavs, Spurs, Rockets, Warriors, Spurs, Spurs, Rockets, Celtics. Yeah. And the Raptors. No, not not Toronto. And the Canucks. Demar Carroll got traded to the uh, Brooklyn Nets. I know that's big Canadian yeah, also, news. Did you see what he said? He said all of the Raptors were just. A they don't. They don't trust each other. <laughs> He's right. Why did Kyle Lowry go back there? Because he got max money. Uh, he didn't get max money. He got three years. Um, I mean, he got a lot of money, but he only got three years. Yeah, he didn't mm -hmm. sign a max contract, which is interesting. He just wanted to be with his best friend, DeMar DeRozan. Or Drake. <laughs> Drake. Or Drake. <laughs> well, I think a lot of people don't realize that, like, these are people. So when you've lived there for eight years or whatever, like, you have a home there. A lot of these guys have families. So it's not as simple as, like, oh, I'm just going to go to L.A. I mean, sometimes it's as simple as I'm just going to go to L.A. because a lot of guys like to live in L.A. or they already have homes there. But, like, Utah Jazz could offer me a max contract, but if I'm already living in a place that I like, I would, it would be kind of like, ah, I don't really want to go there. Cause I don't want to change up my life like that. Um, best signing of free agency. Keeping Durant. Keeping Durant? Yeah, we didn't even talk I about mean, that. That's because a lot of people were like, "Oh, he's gonna want a lot of money. They're not gonna be able to keep Iguodala and Livingston." And not only did they keep them, and Durant came back, they signed Nick Young. Oh, thank the goodness! Team only got better. Debatable. <laughs> I guess JaVale McGee and Nick Young are really good friends. 
Well, they played uh, in Washington together. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Colin. Yeah, two bench players. Best signing. What's up? Best signing. Ooh, James Harden. Once again, what, give you not a, a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just looking down <laughs> at the breakdown of how much he makes, like per oh, per game. Well, it's per year, and then it goes per game, and then it's per quarter, and then it's per like second. How much money make a second? Does he make a thousand dollars a second at least. He's making five hundred and seventy thousand dollars per game. What? And then. Yeah, let me see. There's more. Yeah, I don't know what it is per second. Can you crunch the numbers there for me? 48 times 60. He doesn't I mean, play all 48 minutes. <laughs> that's true. 40 times 60. Anyone got a calculator? Hold on. This is high level stuff. <laughs> Alright, I'm just gonna do it real quick. Bunch of dummies. <laughs> I can't do that in were... my head. It's, he's making like 230, right? 230 a minute? 250? No, less than that. Uh, okay. How much you make a game? 208. 5, 208. Per second. Yeah, per, per second. second. 208 dollars. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Do you imagine? That's easy money. Why did he, like, why are people, now they're going for Melo, which I understand they don't have to pay a lot, but you want to stack a team, why you, why you got to take money like that if you want to win? That's, that's my question. Yeah, that's kind of what I want to talk about too is theoretically, right, if all the guys just agreed like, hey, why don't we all just agree? Well, I guess it's egos. Like, don't you think like when LeBron went to the Heat, they all agreed to take less, but didn't LeBron have the most of all of them? <laughs> I think Dwayne, Dwayne Wade did at the time. Okay. But yeah, you're right. and th I, Well, that's what you get is if you take less, you win it. But James Harden's mindset could be, you know what, I'm not going to be beating the Warriors or whatever big teams, so why don't I get my max money now? Yeah. Like, it, it is a job. I understand that. Yeah, I guess part of it's respect. But you're right. Like, I could see a team doing that in the next 20 years and just, like, pissing everyone off. Like, hey, we're all going to take $5 million a year, and we're going to have, like, six all-stars on the team. But at the same time... If you think about it, it's basketball is a bunch of millionaires getting paid by a bunch of billionaires. So they got to be like, hey, we're doing all this work. We deserve this money. So it'd be really hard to convince them otherwise. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Don't you think that's what the Warriors are doing them right now? Uh, yeah, to an extent. I mean, yeah, I guess. Everyone on that team could be making more money except Steph Curry, right? Well, even Steph Curry, what his his deal is five years, two hundred one million dollars. But he, then right after that, LeBron said he should be making four hundred million. Oh yeah, you're saying like if there was no max contract, like if you could make as much money. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But within the constraints of max contract, Steph Curry is making the most money possible by the rules. Right. Durant took a little less. Clay Thompson is currently making, I think, fifteen million. All right, real quick, and then we'll get back to the salary cap. Uh, worst signing, I can start if you want. Otto Porter. You familiar with him, Kyle? <laughs> Who is Otto Porter? <laughs> it's actually, it's not a real guy. Yeah, I'm just making up stuff right now. Sick. <laughs> and uh, Zach. Uh... Zach Billigus on the Celtics making forty million. He's a really mm, good player. Yeah, that, that guy. And Jawan Evans. <laughs> we should play a uh, real, real or not player next time. Do it right now. <laughs> Just <laughs> all right. Um, Tyreek Evans. No. No. Aren't you naming the guy from the football player? No, he's no, a real player. He was on the Pelicans. He just signed with... Uh, you were the Pelicans. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, we're going to play real or fake uh, team. <laughs> Here's one for you. The Bullets. That was a team. Gonna... The, Grizz the Grizzlies. The Vancouver Grizzlies. Let's bring it back, guys. Let's bring it back. Do they even no. care up there? No. No one cares about basketball. Uh, just Don't hockey. You your... Football, too, right? Yep, hockey's number one. 
and then there's like small groups that obviously like basketball and, and football and then a bunch of weirdos that like the CFL. <laughs> Apparently, well, in basketball, the um, kind of it's like U20 or one of their development teams mm-hmm. just beat the states. So Canadian basketball, watch out. Yeah, it was it was under 19. Okay. Game, yeah. And that's because they don't even send all the good players. They don't send to play. What, didn't Nick Stauskas play for them? No. Nick Team Stauskas Canada? Is, it's under 19. <laughs> He's still under 19, right? <laughs> okay, so I said Otto Porter. I'll just explain why. Bear with me. Um, so Otto Porter is a small forward for the Wizards, and he's a pretty good basketball player. Um, he shot pretty well from three-point range this year. I think this is his. This will be his fifth uh, year in the league. He went the same draft as Nerlens. The Nets offered him a max contract and the Wizards were forced because they didn't want to lose him for nothing so they decided that they would match it and so basically they're limiting themselves so they have John Wall and Bradley Beal but now because they're giving all this money to Otto Porter they can't sign another max free agent they got tricks four basically. years yeah it's what they call the poison pill contract so in the NBA when you're on a rookie deal and you come out of that rookie deal uh, usually it's four years after you get drafted you're a restricted free agent so that means you can sign with anyone but the team that drafted you has the rights to match whatever contract you sign so the nets being the nets offered him a max contract so they're basically saying you can lose him for nothing or you can take this deal that will probably come back and bite you in the end so it's the poison pill i like i like what the nets are doing this offseason yeah. Well, it's what they should be doing this whole time. Take crappy contracts that other teams don't want and sign players. And, like, you don't, you, you have no picks. There's nothing to, like, it's okay if you're going to stink this year because you're not trying to get, like, top picks the next draft. So people that have signed these crappy contracts, like, take upon yourself to take them, like they did with the Lakers. Yeah. And that's what the 76ers did yeah. for a while, too. But what has been what's been taking Brooklyn smart, so long yeah. to do this? <laughs> I think their problem was they were trying to because they still had Brook Lopez, so they were still trying to be competitive. Like they just weren't accepting the fact that yeah. they weren't going to be good. Yeah, there weren't really any like Timothy Mozgov type deals yeah. this year. Um, and the big reason for that is because last year the salary cap jumped up like twenty People million have- or something. So all of a sudden, all these teams had all this money to spend, and they're like, oh, like we might as well spend it on players that we kind of want, so we don't mind overpaying. And then this year, it kind of stabled out a bit, and a lot of teams were expecting it to jump again, and it didn't jump as high as they expected. So all of a sudden, that money became valuable again. Like That cap space didn't matter last year. Now it matters because a lot of teams were just handing out bad contracts. So this year, we saw a lot of teams be a little more conservative with money, um, which is smart on their part. Basically, the salary cap exists to make sure that teams who have a lot of money can't just buy up all the good players. So they set a salary cap, which is based on how much money the league made the year before. Now, any team can exceed the cap, but when they do, they have to pay a luxury tax. There's also a minimum, so each team has to spend a certain amount of money. This year, the salary cap is about $100 million. Now, a max contract is how much money you can actually pay a player. You can only pay a player so much money, and all this is dependent on how many years they've been in the league, if they've ever won the MVP, or if they're an all-star, and if they're still with the team that drafted them. All the details are really tricky, and it's worth a read if you're really into it, but all you need to know is the salary cap is about $100 million, and the top players make about $30 million. So when you have a team of three really good players, that only leaves about $10 million for everyone else. Each team has up to 15 players, so when you have three really good players, that means 12 players are splitting $10 million. Now, some players will take less than the max contract so that they can get other really good players on their team, and that's why we've seen super teams form in the last couple of years. Think the Miami Heat and the Warriors. It's all about managing egos and how much each player values themselves. Okay, so max contract. Should we get rid of it? Keep the salary cap, but there's no max contract on a player. So if you want to pay LeBron James 90% of the team salary, you can do it. 
then who would come and watch the games? If the guy sits or is injured, like, I'm not going to watch LeBron and, and like, a crappy team around him. You know what I mean? It, it, would, it would taint the, the NBA talent pool for teams. So it'd be extremely top heavy, like the only the best players would be getting paid. Exactly. Unless players. they want to go and win. Otherwise you got guys that are like, you know what, I just really want to make a lot of money. Yeah. Let me go somewhere and take the entire team salary and then the rest of the team around me is like a bunch of bombs. Yeah, I think we've seen that already. Like if you put the onus on the players to share that money, they already aren't sharing the money. So why would they if they can make ninety million, I'm pretty sure they're gonna make ninety million if they can. Same kind of question, so we get rid of the salary cap. Free market, laissez-faire. Let them do whatever they want. Invisible hand, Adam Smith. I don't know, in some <laughs> ways you could experiment with that and see if it does self-regulate, but to your point of, of players self-regulating, can you really trust, I guess, owners or even the league itself to kind of have that, I don't know, net out at a, a reasonable price or is it just going to turn into this this money game? And then money just corrupts everything. Yeah. So I think it's it's smart to keep it in, in a lot of ways. Who's paying them? The owners? Yeah, the owners. Oh, so the richest the guys are going to have the best team. So the best markets, like the Knicks could pay whatever. Los Angeles could pay for whatever. Yeah, that's why they put it in because they had all these franchise teams and it was like, well, New York could obviously pay all the good players. The Lakers could pay all the good players. And it really corrupts. And then we only have like three good teams and then all the small market teams who aren't making as much money like the Pacers and the Thunder are kind of at a disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it's kind of like in baseball, like it's not well, like that's the why same you thing. see so you can kind of pay people and as you much see you New York Yankees, Yankees and the Dodgers like they're how much they're paying their players is ridiculous. Yeah, that's chump chain. So I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like not all billionaires are equal. And not all teams are making the same amount of money. <laughs> all right, so this is what we were talking about before, Ryan. Um, as far as I know, there's no salary cap on coaches or front office or facilities. So what that means is while you're limited in paying players, why not pay the best coaches? Why not pay the best GMs, the best trainers, the best doctors? I think that's just a money thing like owners are just being selfish with their money i think they base a lot of the uh the payments based on an average between other coaches in the league and other uh like gms so like uh chancy billups was going to be the Cavs gm right and they they low bottom like i think they low bottom two million off of the norm i think the norm was two million more and he like he bounced yeah, out of it like because that. he's like this is uh, you guys are wasting my time. Bounced so it, out. I get it. Uh, he's actually now playing in the big three league again. <laughs> John <Cetus? laughs> Yeah. We should talk about the big three. I have, I have, I have... Oh, that's uh, next season. <laughs> How to build a dynasty in the so big three. I'll get players that have been retired that year. Just force uh, players to retire. That's what's going to happen. LeBron's going to retire. So the rule is the they got to be played in the NBA. Played in the NBA. Five years out? No, they don't have to be five years out because he wanted Kobe, and they have to be they have to be like over oh, thirty. Okay. You had to yeah, play in the NBA though, because then you get a bunch of scrubs that come out. Okay, and that covers the big three. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> uh, but anyway, so yeah, so that's what I was saying. It, it basically evens out with them figuring out what everyone else is getting paid in the league. I mean, if they want to pay their coaches more, go ahead. But you see. St- Steve Kerr's not even there for the whole yeah. season, and they set a winning record. Coaches don't even do anything. That's my question, is how much coaching is actually going on? Like, I understand it's probably more like player management than, like, fundamental coaching, obviously, but what are coaches doing? They're already having probably the best trainers, the best doctors. So the only yeah. money that would increase for talent would be around coaching, and, yeah. What are they actually paying for? So I think when you have a young team like the 76ers or the Suns, um, coaching really matters because you have all these players who are 19, 20, 21, who some of them have been playing basketball all their life. But a lot of these guys, like Joel Embiid only started playing basketball when he was, what, mm-hmm. 17, right? So a Still lot of hope. these guys, while they're super athletic and have... 
I still hope. Uh, a ton of potential. <laughs> you know, you're way too old. You'll never get drafted. <laughs> still hope for me. I'm only 22. Okay. I'm a prime. I think prime if anyone drafted. would get drafted, it would be me. No, because you play like a power forward, and you need to play like a I could play forward. In the, I could play in the wheelchair league. You could play the bench. <laughs> That's it. Um, I totally forget what I was saying. Oh, Kyle, you're asked about coaches. So anyways, like a lot of these players still have a lot of basic fundamentals, like how to shoot. Like a lot of players come into the league not knowing how to shoot. They're just super athletic and they're like, well, we'll teach you how to shoot because you can't teach a guy to be 6'8", 200 pounds and really fast, but we can teach a guy how to shoot. Um, and then I think like when you get to the Warriors, you're right at this point, any coach could step in because they kind of have a system already, but when you have a coach who steps in and says this is a system it takes a few years for that to be put in place and that's why the best teams usually have a consistent coach with a consistent system like the spurs have been good for 15 years and that's why they can bring in a player who may not be very good on another team but he they uh, just plug him in and like hey you're a really good shooter and you're really good at defending the post so that's all we want you to do and you work really well in our system so when you have guys uh, coaches like that you're really at an advantage because you have so much in place and you're not building team identity you're not looking for a system you already have it in place and you could just plug and play all right last thing so like i was saying before when you're building through free agency i've never seen a team that spent a ton in free agency and had success there because there's so much to manage and there's so many variables. There's egos, there's team fit, there's uh, paying the lots amount of money, the health of the players, and all those things. It's so much better as a team when you're looking at free agency to look at it as, okay, how can we upgrade? How can we keep our own players? If we need, oh, okay, we need a score, let's go out and get that score. As opposed to, oh, we're just going to throw a lot of money at these guys who are good on other teams, but we don't know how well they're going to work together. Yeah, no, it does. There are a lot of variables to it. Will the players even pan out on their team after picking them up compared to a guy that you draft and sort of put through your system? That's our show for today. Thank you so much for listening and feel free to tell your friends. Apparently, we're getting big in Canada. Thanks for listening to our podcast today. We'll be releasing them every Tuesday during the NBA playoffs. Dynasty is produced by Studio D, and you can find other podcasts by going to studiod.co slash podcast. You can listen to us there or any other way that you get your podcast. Also, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at this underscore is underscore dynasty for extra content and to join in on the conversation. 